So we've had the weigh in for Anthony Joshua versus Andy Ruiz. Joshua weighed in at 247 pounds. Ruiz weighed in at 268 pounds. So he is over 20 pounds heavier than Anthony Joshua. Now, if we look at Ruiz's weight in previous fights, in fact, can we refresh this to get his weight for this fight? No, they haven't put it up yet. But if you look at his weight in previous fights, just five weeks ago, he was six pounds lighter at 262 against Dimitrenko. Last year, he was 252 against Kevin Johnson, 260 against Vargas, 255 against Joseph Parker back in 2016. So 268 for this fight against AJ, this is the heaviest he's been in a while. Now, to be fair, he did have his jeans on. Maybe he had his boots on as well. Maybe that added a bit of poundage. But still, people, he had a training camp for the Dimitrenko fight, which was only in April. And that was a pretty long training camp. He had a week off after the Dimitrenko fight, then went into training camp for Anthony Joshua, which was five weeks. So in total, he must have had what? 10, 12 weeks training camp with a week break in between? How on earth has he come in heavier for Dimitrenko? Uh, excuse me, heavier for Joshua than he was against Dimitrenko? How is that possible? What's he been eating? Maybe as soon as he got the fight, he started eating like he was rich already. Because this is a life-changing moment for Andy Ruiz. Win or lose, he's getting millions. He's never been paid millions before for a fight. So it's definitely a big moment for him. And like I say, maybe he's got happy already. <laughs> he started eating extra because he's he feels like he's rich before the money's gone in his account. As long as he goes out on his shield, he'll get that money. So... You know, it is what it is. But yeah, 268 for Andy Ruiz. Look, I know he's a big roly-poly guy anyway, but you, you don't want to see him coming in heavier for this fight than he was for his last fight just five weeks ago. That's not a good sign. At 247, that's a fairly decent weight for Anthony Joshua. It's not too heavy. It's not overly light. Um, some people have said that they're concerned that Joshua's weight is creeping back up again because, of course, he was 242 against Parker, 245 against Povetkin, now 247 against Andy Ruiz. But he was 254 against Takam and 250 against Klitschko. People weren't happy with, with his weights in either of those fights, including myself. I wasn't happy. Against Molina, 249. Brazil, 243. Charles Martin, 244. Dylan White, 245. Garish. So... 247, even if you go back to the Jason Gavin, Zambano love fights, 247 is not too, too high, okay? I'd still like to see him a little lighter, I reckon around 244, 245 is ideal for him. Uh, but 247 is not too far above that. It's when he reaches the 250 and over that it's a little more concerning. Um, so yeah, it should be a good weight for him. And it's definitely not as concerning seeing him at 247 as it is seeing Andy Ruiz at 268. <laughs> That's for sure. So hopefully we'll get a good fight here. Hopefully we'll get a good performance from both men. And may the best man win. Now, of course, at the scales, people are looking at Ruiz's weight. They're looking at his size. And they're just saying, come on, man, this is a mismatch. You can often be lured into thinking that an individual has no chance at all just based on their physique compared to their opponent. And it's understandable to a certain extent, but Andy Ruiz has always been a heavy guy. He's always been a guy who comes in there looking like he hasn't trained a day in his life and he spends 24-7 on a couch eating pizzas and drinking soda. He's always looked like that, but be that as it may, he managed to get himself in position before to fight for a heavyweight title against Joseph Parker. And many people felt like he won that fight. Not me personally, but many other people feel like he did win. And that was against the Joseph Parker who looked in much better shape than Andy Ruiz. He's fought big guys before. He's fought muscular guys, athletic guys, and he's managed to beat the vast majority of them. Now, there are some unknowns going into this fight. There's an unknown for AJ because he's never been in there with somebody with as fast a hands as Andy Ruiz. Joseph Parker is probably close to Ruiz in terms of hand speed, but in that particular fight, 
because of the way AJ fought, which was very defensive, and because the referee was on Parker's case and wouldn't let him work inside, Parker never really got the opportunity to let those fast hands fly. So you never really, you know, saw how quick Parker's hands were. Um, hopefully we won't have a referee like that here in the AJ Ruiz fight and Ruiz will have the opportunity to have a fair fight and let his hands fly. So it's going to be interesting to see how AJ deals with that kind of hand speed because I do believe he's got the fastest hands that anyone, uh, you know, faster hands than anyone AJ has been in the ring with before and faster hands than AJ himself. So that's the unknown for AJ. And also AJ, other than the Povetkin fight, he hasn't fought a front foot counter puncher. So, you know, I've drawn comparisons to the Povetkin fight before and it might play out in a similar fashion. Now, as much as AJ is stepping into the unknown slightly with Ruiz's hand speed, Ruiz is stepping into the unknown in a massive way against AJ because he's never been in the ring with, he's been in the ring with big guys before, but not big guys with this level of athleticism and certainly not big guys with this level of punching power, precision, class, pedigree, etc. Uh, so, and he's also never been on this kind of stage. Yes, he fought Parker in New Zealand for the heavyweight title, but how many people attended that? What was it, seven, 8,000 people? This is going to be, what, 15,000 to 19,000 at the um, at Madison Square Garden. It's going to be a raucous atmosphere. It's a very big stage. How's Andy Ruiz going to cope with that from a mental point of view? I think he should be fine, but you never know. So I think Ruiz is stepping into the unknown. He's never been in there with anybody remotely like AJ, but AJ has been in with people who have some of the similar kind of attributes to Andy Ruiz. You know, Ruiz has been in there with people like Tor Hamer, uh, Joe Hanks, and I mentioned those guys because those were guys who hit Ruiz with quite a lot of clean shots. And Ruiz took their punches no problem. I mean, he barely flinched. I remember when he fought Tor Hamer, Hamer was hitting him with some real nice shots in the first few rounds. And as I say, Ruiz barely flinched. I'm certainly not suggesting that Tor Hamer hits as hard as AJ, but he's still a big athletic man. And there's obviously some kind of power there. The same thing against Joe Hanks. Hanks was hitting Ruiz with some big shots. Hanks himself was what, 240, something like that. Cracking Ruiz on the chin. Ruiz barely flinched. So he certainly don't have a David Price chin. You know, he certainly has some kind of punch resistance there. If he turns out to have a George Chavalo chin, an Oliver McCall chin, then we may we might have a real, real spectacular fight on our hands. We'll see. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Were you disappointed by Ruiz's weight? Uh, were you expecting AJ to come in around 247? Were you hoping he would come in slightly heavier or slightly lighter? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And has the weight of either man changed your uh, opinion on how the fight is going to play out? Let me know, people. It's happening. I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.